U.S. media are reporting that Washington has warned its European allies about Russian efforts to develop nuclear weapons based in space to target satellites. The Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner, has called it a serious national security threat and asked President Biden to declassify any related information. Moscow says the reports are a ruse by the White House to get congressional backing for more Ukraine aid. Well, for more on those reports, I'm now joined from Munich by Jan Techau. He's a European security and defense analyst working for Eurasia Group. That's a global political risk research and consulting firm. Uh, Jan, first of all, what do you make of those US reports of Russian efforts to develop space-based nuclear weapons? Do you think Europe has to worry about that? Well, I mean, there's no clear and present danger at, at this point. As you said uh, just now, these are weapons not designed to hit targets on the ground on Earth. They're meant to destroy a country's communications and reconnaissance assets in space. Um, and 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 so these are not, you know, a clear and present danger down here. Plus, they haven't really been deployed yet. This is what the American report also makes clear. Um, they are they have been developed and they are at a fairly um, advanced stage but they're not active yet. So no immediate clear and present danger. On the other hand, of course, it's hugely worrisome um, if uh, a nation develops a very potent kind of, you know, satellite killer system, all kinds of uh, infrastructure elements on the ground here, down here from telephoning uh, uh, to uh, data flows depend on satellites, uh, including defense efforts. So if somebody really develops that kind of uh, asset uh, also against international treaties, that is a greatly worrisome development. Now, threats from space or not, Europe is nervous about what the next U.S. election means for security on the continent. Should it be? Yeah, I think the Europeans really um, should be worried, and they are worried. You can see the debate, you know, unfolding in Europe here, in the capitals and in Brussels and in in, in the defense community, really. Um, you know, Donald Trump's remarks over the last weekend have increased that debate, but it's been going on for much longer. We've seen um, over the last 10 years or so, since the annexation of Crimea, um, a, a pretty significant uptick in defense spending in Europe. Uh, and the Europeans now need to face a situation where potentially um, the U.S. security guarantee might not hold for much longer, um, the Trump risk scenario that we've been talking about. Um, and all of this has energized people here. The problem is that, you know, the Europeans are also short on cash, and there's only so much political consensus you can get on defense spending, you know, skyrocketing. So we have political and fiscal limits to this. And this is the dilemma that the Europeans find themselves in. They urgently need to do, no, do, to, to, need to do more, regardless of who's the president. And at the same time, there are pretty serious limitations on the ground here. Uh, talking about these limitations, let's look at the worst case scenario there. Uh, the, the US dropping out, out of NATO. How long would uh, Europe need uh, to actually make up for that? It depends on where you look. When you look at conventional forces only, so all of the non-nuclear stuff, that already, you know, uh, would have to, would, would probably take years uh, and many years, decades perhaps, you know, many of the strategic enablers, strategic airlift, reconnaissance, command and control capacities, all of the sophisticated stuff that the US has to offer cannot easily be replaced by the Europeans. And then when you look at the nuclear side, it's even more worrisome because that is hugely expensive, would require a very different kind of force than what the UK and France currently have, the only two European nuclear forces, and would be immensely expensive. So, um, you know, for the Europeans to lose the US uh, nuclear deterrent is really the worst case scenario, because then they become exposed and blackmailable, if you will, and then the security landscape in Europe changes pretty dramatically. And there are voices who have called for Europe to build its own nuclear shield. Is it this realistic? I mean, the, the, the time frame is key here. It is not realistic when you look at, you know, the U.S. elections in the fall and then a, a possible Trump presidency. Uh, it is not really realistic when you look at the, the fiscal heavy lifting that would be required. Unbelievable amounts of money would have to flow into this. And then the question also is, do you build national deterrence, you know, for each country their own? Or do you build a collective det uh, deterrent, which is what is part of the discussion at the moment? Very, very difficult to pull off what kind of chain of command, what kind of political authorization for a collective deterrent, you know, who would in the end 
have to press the button? Who would authorize this? All of these are completely unresolved questions, apart from the credibility question. You know, if you put a nuclear force in place, you have to have the full escalation ladder in place to make it credible, which also means much more uh, troops on the ground, uh, conventional forces on the ground uh, to make your protection credible. None of that is in place now. So no, it's not realistic in the short or medium term. And in the long term, it's at least doubtful. The defense analyst Jan Techo of the Eurasia Group, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you.